Right, so um, we've got 32% of Americans over age 20 are obese. We're going to look at random samples of 500. Um, and if we, if we looked at these random samples of 500 and recorded percent of people in the sample who are obese, we expect to get data that are, data that are approximately normally distributed. We're going to find the mean and standard devi deviation of this normal distribution. And we're going to round the standard deviation to one decimal place. Okay. So the first thing to know is that if we picked a... Um, we expect that the mean, and it's designated with this Greek symbol mu, um, uh, for 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 the population is 32 percent, and we expect that to hold for uh, sample sizes of 500. Okay, and I'm just going to get it both ways, just so we can see both ways. I mean, you can either give it as a percent, or or we would expect for samples of 500. Let's get 0 0.32 times 500, and that's 32% of 500, which is 160, or, okay. you know, 160 um, out of 500, same thing, right, 460, okay. So for the standard uh, deviation designated sigma in Greek, that formula that we're using to approximate it is the um, is the this guy here? Um, I'll just knock off the so everyone can see real quick. Um, so it's this formula here from your book. It's square root of p times a hundred minus p all over n, where p is the um, you know percentage of um, the the mean percentage, right? So in our case, our P is going to be um, 32. So we got square root of P times 100 minus P all over N. And so in, in our case, our P is just 32. That's how we use this formula. So we got 32 times 100 minus 32 all over n, and n in our case is 500, that's the, the number of the sample, and we just get the square root of that. So in my calculator, I'm going to go square root, parenthesis, 32, parenthesis, 100, minus 32, parenthesis, over 500, and then close the parenthesis for that square root. So let's all make sure that's there, and thanks a million for waiting on, I know you've so anyone that's already got this, thanks a million for uh, waiting this out. 32 times 100 minus 32 um, over 500. Okay, and we get 2.086 and so on. So we get 2.086 you know, one and so on. And it says round that to the nearest tenth, so 2.1. You all okay with that? Yeah. So in other words, our mean actually they want, and again, when we're using this formula, we're just talking about like percentages. So our mean is 32% and our standard deviation is 2.1. So what I'd like folks to do is to just draw up our little uh, normal distribution here and um, just a little bell curve, just draw a little bell curve like that, right? And in the middle, you've got your mean of uh, 32. And um, one standard deviation up would be, you know, um, uh, 34.1. And then two standard deviations would be uh, 36.2. Right, 36.2, cool. 36.2. And then you can go back to if you want. I'm just going to do it for, for fun. Uh, this is going to be like 29.9. And if I go down to, it's... 27.8. Um, 27.8. Yeah, you're getting faster than me. Perfect. So just as a rule of thumb, before we even look at any answers, I just want you all to remember the rule of thumb that 95% um, 
of observations are within two standard deviations of the mean. All right, and so this goes out here, right, like that here. So we, we have, and I didn't even ask this, but I'm just, I'm just going over this for fun. Um, but 95%, and maybe for a bit of explanation, 95% of our observations of our, are, are between, of our, of our groups are going to be between here and here. What does that mean in this context? If you pick random samples of 500 Americans, 95% um, uh, of those groups are going to have an, a percentage of obese people between about 28 and 36%. So if, if you picked 500 people and there were less than 27.8, they were down here, we would consider them, them unusually um, uh, healthy, let's say. Or not obese. If you, if you, if we, if we, um, if we picked five random five hundred people and their their obesity level was above thirty six percent, then we would consider that to be uh, unusually high. Okay, but in the middle is is what we expect. We expect groups of five hundred people to be between twenty eight and thirty six percent, and I just can't help. Zero, so that's actually twenty seven point eight. I just can't help beating this to death and going zero point two seven eight times um, five hundred because that's one hundred and thirty nine people out of five hundred, right? Right. <laughs> and I just can't help myself going zero point three six two times five hundred, and that's one hundred and eighty one people. Okay. So so um, uh, sorry, one hundred eighty one out of five hundred people. So we ex so the mean is is one hundred sixty or thirty two percent, and 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 anything less so out of random groups of five hundred people less than one hundred and thirty nine obese is um, a big deal, and more than one hundred eighty one obese is a big deal. In between there is what we would call normal or to be expected. So anyway, beating it to death and moving on to the next the the part B which is kind of checking for your understanding of what this normal distribution is. And B, it just asks you one question. It says, would it be unusual to find a random sample of 500 Americans over 20 in which 35% were obese? So let's find 35% on that graph, right? So it's about, about there somewhere, right? Yeah. So that's our 35%. And what do we think? Is that unusual in the usual range or in the unusual range? In the usual range. Yeah, and that's it. You're done. Because it is within, 35% is within two standard deviations of the mean and so it is not so, so therefore, therefore it is usual. So therefore not unusual. Make sense? Yeah. And that's okay, all. Okay, so, so doing the bell graph would have answered my question. Right. Immediately, but right. sitting here trying to math brain myself to death. Yes. And doing a math. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about drawing that bell graph and getting the picture of it. Okay, so yeah. just basically cut out a bunch of bell graphs that you have made up. <laughs> yeah, or just draw. It won't take you long. It doesn't have to. I'm, I'm no artist. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, yeah. so then that makes a lot more sense. So if I just do the bell graphs after I get the means and the yeah. standard deviations, then I'll be okay. I'm still yeah. trying to do here and yeah. okay. Yeah, because okay. and the 90, this is the most common use of a bell graph is to have a look at that 95 percent range two standard right. deviations i mean there's more to it there's also we know that 68 percent are between within one standard deviation so yeah. 68 68 percent of and it doesn't have to be this particular example of groups right. of 500 people and and what the obesity rate is it could be anything actually Right. That's normally distributed, but 68% are within one standard deviation, 98%, 95% are within two, 
and in fact 99.7 percent are within within three so if you go down another one right uh you end up with uh uh 99.7 percent of groups of 500 are within three right yeah so really unusual would be but would be less than three standard deviations on over here or more than three standard deviations over here right and 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 um so 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 anyway so the 95 percent by the way means that 95 percent you kind of look at the area of the graph it's like the area of this of this bell the uh -huh. area is 95 percent is within two standard deviations right so i basically i could have just avoided all of this if i would have just drawn out the bell graph and yeah. just not math brained myself yeah again. yeah it's more about draw the bell graph and and make draw the picture and tell the story and and beat it to death that way that's what i advise yeah okay all cool. right well that makes a lot more sense instead of okay yeah yeah okay yeah that that does make